Hey everyone and a very warm welcome to our English lesson. So thank you so much for subscription and sharing of the channel. I can't believe that you are sitting at 11,000 subscri subscribers. Um, please keep on liking the channel and keep on sharing the link and let us grow the family together. Um, we're still going to and delve deeper on creative writing in preparation for prep examination as well as time three tasks for other grades which is grade 10 and 11 but most importantly we are going to also prepare our grade 12 because in no time we are going to kick start um, our trial examination and of course uh, paper three will be the first paper that you're going to write now we are going to look into longer transactional text writing of a speech and uh, what I have said in the previous lessons pertaining to creative writing is that what you need to understand is the format, is the structure, and the purpose of what, of, of why, I'm sorry, of why you are writing that uh, transactional piece. And of course, the purpose will be deduced from the question itself. It's also important to interpret the question correctly so that you craft the relevant response. Now, we are going to look into writing of a speech. Just a brief definition. A speech is a written account of an oral address with a specific purpose in mind. Um, the aim of writing a speech is to convince your audience to buy into your idea or pay attention to your subject of discussion. The purpose will be determined by the topic. In an examination, you might be asked to write a speech on a particular topic or you could be asked to imagine yourself as someone else and give a speech to an audience. So it is important to note who are you addressing, which is your audience, and the purpose. So I'm going to, just going to write it down here. You must know the purpose plus audience. It means who are you addressing, okay, so that you... Whatever that you are going to craft is it's a relevant it's a it becomes rather a relevant a relevant response. So the purpose of your speech will be deduced from the question. The examiner will tell you, imagine yourself perhaps maybe as um an a, an employee and your boss is leaving the company and then you are asked to represent the rest of the employees and then to render a speech to your boss. So that the this is just a mere example of the kind of scenarios that you should expect from the examination and i would also always emphasize the importance of following all the steps of process writing starting with the planning because once you plan it means that you go back to the question to check as to whether are you going to use the relevant key points are you going to use the relevant facts that speaks to the question Correct. And then now, I would also want to emphasize that feature, uh, on the features of your speech. When writing your speech, always use the first person I to express the opinion. Uh, the degree of formality in your speech depends on the audience and the topic to be presented. So, like I've said, you should know the, pop the purpose and the audience, and the degree of formality will depend on the audience that you are addressing, whether you're addressing a group of friends, or is it a formal setup where you are addressing in a professional setup, like maybe in a work environment. So, it is important to also note the audience that you are going to address as directed by the question in the examination. And then the structure of of your speech a speech is very similar to writing of an essay that means that you are going to have an introduction you'll have your introduction and then you are also going to have your body and then of course you're going to have your conclusion however bear in mind i will always emphasize on the required number of words for a longer transactional text this is not writing of a speech i'm just saying the format and the structure might be, be the same so in the introductory now let us look into this example the scenario was that um it's a farewell speech where you are asked to represent uh, the rest of the learners and then render a speech uh, during your farewell ceremony on behalf of um, the learners, right? As a learner yourself as well. So in such a setup, of course, you are in a school environment. You need to think about the audience that you are going to address, right? And then in your introductory paragraph, that's where now you also need to detail your 
greetings right and then but first and foremost the first thing that you need to do when writing a speech your speech must have a heading now you look into this speech the heading says that a sorry school farewell speech so we know that this speech is going to be a farewell speech but also the audience would be a school and then within the school we know that of course we are going to address teachers you are going to address learners and then as well as the school principal right so first thing in first first and foremost we are going to have what you call a heading and then from there you are going to have the introduction and then into in your intro in um in your introduction you should start your speech with a greetings formal greetings depending on the scenario right remember we said the degree the degree of formality of your speech depends on the question that the, the examiners have used but most in most question papers speech are rendered in a formal setup I've, I, it's a rare case where you find a speech that is informal right so you even the tone and register meaning that the diction choice of words it should be best suited for the audience that you are addressing now let us look into this introduction the principal mr dumney honored guest teachers parents and most importantly the grade 12 of 2013 so this is a greeting so it, it, it at the time of the day it, it it will be it will be dependent entirely upon you remember this creative writing you must start by saying a uh, good day or good evening if maybe the event takes place in the evening or the event takes place in the morning right so it's important to note the uh, um it, it is important to note uh, the audience that you are addressing in your greeting and then to have that formal salutation right and then from there after the introductory now you leave space in the second paragraph now this way now you kick start your 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 um you, you kick start your uh, presentation right and then as i've stated that um a speech has got uh, similar features of um of an essay right but it is just that remember that an essay is longer this is uh, um rather a longer transactional text but the number of words are not the same as that of an essay and after having your introductory paragraph and your formal salutation remember in your salutation i'm repeating you need to include the audience that you are addressing and then each each of your paragraphs should have a topic sentence that this will make it clear what each section is about remember a topic sentence will be the first sentence of a new paragraph that which that which introduces the idea that you are going to unpack in that particular paragraph right now this is just a farewell speech and then even in your in your speech it must really sound like a speech like i have already mentioned earlier that you need to use the first personal pronoun i right huge congratulations to the class of 2013 after a journey of so many years we have achieved a stunning goal right so this the the, the speech that uh, uh, started with a salutate of um, greetings and salutations and then now it went further now to address the audience that this indeed is a farewell speech remember there must be correlation in your speech because this is a school farewell speech now the third paragraph this wonderful school has been our home now can you see the division of ideas here it was a congratulatory paragraph where um the speaker was congratulating the class of 2013 at that particular year because it was their farewell now paragraph two represent a new idea to say this was uh, sorry this wonderful school has been our home now it means paragraph two is going to be centered around the importance or the significance of the school towards the speaker right this wonderful school has uh, has been our home for five years i was talking to mr Dumney earlier and he said that this metric group is one of the best classes in years. We are, sorry, we are a credit. We are a credit to ourselves and our families. And what is also important is that when writing a speech, it, it you need to breathe life into your speech. For an example, you may make use of uh, personal anecdotes to make your audience relate, or tell a short story about yourself, or provide a short personal detail. Uh, to breathe some life into your into your speech for an example this uh speaker here says that i was talking to it's it's uh, to mr demney uh Dumini, um earlier and he said 
he is relating a story, right? That's what you call in English an anecdote. It means that you are relating a particular story that is relevant to the context of your speech so that your speech becomes a bit lively and it's another way of grabbing the audience attention. Remember when you write a speech, it should sound um, communicational. If, if, if for a lack of a better word, it should not sound so abstract that you forget that you are addressing an audience. Okay, so it should really sound like you are rendering what a, a speech. Now, remember, this was a just a farewell speech. And then um, to make your speech also interesting, besides using uh, personal stories or relating stories that are best suited for the context that you are uh, 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 actually delivering you may also use few historical questions in the body of your speech remember the purpose of historical question is to arouse interest from the audience um, uh, and to make the audience to think more deeper about uh, the topic or the subject that you are uh, delivering or discussing if not presenting you may use historical questions in the body of your speech and then you must you may also use emotive language remember when you I was uh, you uh, we were discussing discussing visual literacy we spoke about uh, emotive language where a language that evokes emotions you um, go back to uh, you can also go back to descriptive essay uh, lesson where I, I, I showed how um, the use of emotive language can also have uh, a way of arousing uh, um, the audience's um, um, interest in, in, in the topic that you are are discussing if not the topic that you are presenting you may also use figurative language to create powerful images in your, in the minds of your audience you can also use repetition to emphasize on some of your points but however be careful when it comes to uh, repetition so let us further look into make an example uh, 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 from sorry relate what i've just uh, explained by using an example that is here with gratitude in my heart, I sincerely thank the principal and the grade 12 teachers. I also thank all our parents and my fellow students. We shared one another's pain and success. Here is one piece of advice. Shoot for the stars. There, your dreams will take you to a very special place and where you can be, sorry, there, sorry, will take you to a, a very special place where you can be the person you want to be. Thank you and good luck to everyone so your speech must have a body and a conclusion i must hear that in as much as you greeted the audience in the introductory paragraph i must also hear that you are concluding and then after conclusion you need to also thank the very same audience that you greeted in your in your um, introductory paragraph now here's a tip that i would give you think of the word perfect when writing a speech what does that mean? The letter P, it stands for personal anecdotes to bring a sp a, to breathe life into your speech. Like I've said, this is where you can tell or relate maybe a story, a short story to enrich your speech. And then E can also stand for emotive language to persuade your audience. You can use emotive language to persuade your audience. And then R, this way you can use rhetorical questions. Um, to make your audience listen and then F you can also use figurative expression in your speech and then E stands for emphasis through repetition you can repeat some of the facts and then C compassion and contrast to make your points clear and then the last T it will be for tone or voice that is relevant and persuasive for your specific audience so this is just the structure the structure is that your speech must have a heading. You divide your speech into paragraphs, not too many paragraphs. Remember, here we are adhering to the required number of words. And then please make sure that um, you address the specific uh, audience as determined by the question. The first thing that you need to do is to read the question. What is that you need to write a speech about? And then your speech must have one or two of these elements that I've already stated to make it more interesting. And then at the end of your conclusion, you must also thank your audience in as much as you have opened by addressing your audience, by greeting them. Also, towards the end, you need to thank them. And that's how you conclude your, your speech. Remember, with longer transactional tracks, what's important is to know the format structure. Once you know the format and structure, you just work on those um, 
important nuggets that will en- enable you to write a correct piece. So when writing a speech, I've said we are repeating. In Your speech must have a heading. Like this was a farewell speech. We had a heading. The first paragraph should be your, your greetings, should be the greetings. And then after greetings, you divide your work into short paragraphs, not forgetting to adhere to the, to the required number of words. And then also you make use, make use of, um, um, uh, it might be uh, anecdotes, it might be figurative expressions, it might be, you may not use all of them at once, but at least one or two from there, perfect from the perfect uh, tip list that I've given you here, you can use one or two and then make sure that um, your speech does sound. It does not really sound like you are writing, let's say, an article or you are writing an essay. It must really sound that you are presenting that I- the, uh, those ideas to an audience and make use of the first personal pronoun I. And then you may also address your audience like like, such as using uh, pronouns such as we or maybe addressing them using you to show that um, you breathe life into your not to show rather to breathe life into your into your speech thank you once more keep on uh, subscribing and sharing the link and stay tuned for more transactional writing tips